What the heck is blood pressure? Uh, guys, I can talk days and days about blood pressure. I've uh, created at least, uh, what was it, three videos, uh, probably almost an hour long just on blood pressure. So real quick, I'm going to give you the real basic Cliff Notes version of blood pressure right now. Okay. So blood pressure, like I said before, is a mixture of volume times resistance. Okay. So how much volume is coming out of the heart? Think of your heart as a uh, warehouse. Let's say it's a um, Home Depot warehouse. Let's say it's a Toys R Us warehouse, okay? I don't know what you have in your state, but let's just say it's a warehouse. And our main objective is to create toys. And we're a toy warehouse. And we're going to pump out as much toys every single month through our production line, right? That's volume. How much volume are we pushing out? Um, you know, you can call it cardiac output. Same thing. I'm going to get into that later, though. But let's focus real quick. Then times by resistance. So we're a toy company. We're pumping out volume. Boom, boom. Yeah, we made a thousand toys last month. We're looking at you know 1,500 uh, toys this month. But how much resistance are we getting? You know, um, getting our toys, let's say, out into the community. Okay. How is it? How hard is it to ship our toys? How hard is it to get our toys? out of the warehouse and into the community. That's really resistance there. Is there a lot of resistance? Then we're going to have a backup of toys and a backup of congestion in our warehouse. Or can we ship the toys out and everything's moving along just great, right? Or do we have a backup because let's just say our warehouse door is broken, you know? Let's just say that the highways leading to our customers out of our main driveway our aorta, let's say the major highways are really, really bad. The highways suck. The highways have potholes. The highways are breaking down. The highways have a lot of congestion. And those highways are backing up. And our toy production company now has to, you know, is very, very tight on space. We can't produce anymore, right? And it's getting really tough to push out more toys because we're backing up, right? That's exactly what happens with heart failure patients, okay? Too much volume, too much volume being pushed back into the heart, down the aorta, into that left ventricle, so the left ventricle swells, okay? Your um, brain neutritic peptides, your BNP. Now I'm going off on a tangent, but you need to know this. Your BNP. What the heck is a BNP, right? Now I'm not talking about a BMP, your basal metabolic panel, Talking about a BN, like Nancy, P. BMP, that is brain neutrate peptides. When that left ventricle starts to swell because of so much volume being pushed down on it, that left ventricle will start to become hypertrophied, okay? It just basically swells. There's so much volume being pushed down on that left ventricle, um, it's almost like you're stuffing down, um, I don't know, Christmas, and you're stuffing down so much toys into the stocking, what's going to happen to the end of the stocking, right? The end of the stocking is probably going to tear. But before it tears, it's going to stretch. So that BMP should, um, from the brain, neutrotic peptides, communicate with the heart with the chemical and help the heart to become more elastic and stretch just a little bit more, okay? So normal BMP should be less than 100. Anything greater than 100 is considered heart failure. I had a patient with a BMP of 25,000. And that's pretty, pretty bad, if you know what I mean. But guys, let's go back with our blood pressure. Volume and resistance. So let's talk something about volume, okay? So cardiac output. What the heck is cardiac output? Cardiac output is a mixture of stroke volume times your heart rate. Now, before you get really confused, let me explain this to you. Okay? So we got volume times your resistance 
How much resistance are we getting from the highways of our hearts? Is there a lot of is there a lot of traffic on the freeways? Do the freeways suck? Um, are the freeways um, clogging up our major pathways? Volume. How much volume are we putting back into the heart? Cardiac output, guys. Cardiac output is our volume. Stroke volume, the amount of blood that is pumped from the heart in one stroke. Stroke volume, okay? The amount of blood, stroke volume. Cardiac output, the amount of blood pumped from the heart in one minute, 60 seconds. Should be between four to six liters per minute. That's a lot of dang liters, right? Through the course of your lifetime? It's crazy. So guys, I don't know if you've ever seen a liter before, but um, that's pretty much like almost a gallon. Actually, that's over a gallon. It's almost two gallons in um, you know, a liter. What was, what was I saying? A, um, a gallon is about 3.84 liters. So your heart's pumping about two gallons every minute, or between one and two gallons. That's pretty crazy. But stroke volume, guys, stroke volume. The amount of blood pumped with one stroke, okay? Heart rate, what is our heart rate? Our heart rate, how many times the heart beats per minute, okay? So we're just breaking it down. How many toys are we creating a month? Well, let's take a look. How many toys can one production line create, right? Um, you know, in, in, in one day, how many toys can we create? Does that make sense? For your heart rate, how many times, how many beats per minute? How many times can we create these toys over the course of a month? And is there going to meet resistance in the peripherals? Are we going to meet resistance? Are we going to back up congestion? So, that's where our stroke volume and heart rate come from. And they really add up to make cardiac output, how much blood is pumped from your heart in 60 seconds, one minute, usually should be four to six liters per minute. Um, now, what can go wrong? Why does the blood pressure tank sometimes and sometimes the blood pressure goes up, okay? Let's talk about that right now. So, a few things that could happen is stress. Remember we talked about stress. Your sympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system is on, you have more stress, you have vasoconstriction, okay? So when we're talking about volume and resistance, which one does it fall under? Volume or resistance? Vasoconstriction. You have that sympathetic nervous system turned on. Your blood vessels have gone from here just to whoop, right there. You're running from your life, from the bully that's going to beat you up and take your lunch money, right? You need more blood and oxygen to your heart and lungs. More resistance now. NG2 receptors, your angiotensin receptors, have shrunk down and really causing a tight uh, vasoconstriction on your blood vessels. Let's say renin, also created in the adrenal gland of your kidneys, has caused that constriction of your blood vessels now. Okay, let's say you're in heart failure, and like I talked about in um, our heart rate, your kidneys are really pissed off because they gave the heart four liters of blood, the heart gave back two liters of blood, and now the kidneys want to hold on to all their blood. Because like, you know, I'm not going to give you four liters if you're only going to give me back two liters there. You know what I mean? Okay. So... That's why the kidneys grab that renin and shrink it. That's why the kidneys grab that angiotensin and shrink the blood vessels to cause more blood flow to go to the kidneys so they can hold on to more. Okay? So vasoconstriction could increase the blood pressure. Um, sympathetic nervous system, your fight and flight, anxiety, fear, pain could increase the blood pressure. Blood pressure goes up. Um, but usually most of the time, there's a volume issue. Patients uh, have way too much volume because the kidneys now are holding on to all that fluid now, and you have way too much volume with your um, heart failure patients, that congestive heart failure patients. 
So guys, see my videos about congestive heart failure. It will clear up a lot. I go into all the um, drugs, A, B, C, and D drugs to really clear up your heart failure patient. Because your vital signs are going to be all jacked up with your heart failure patient. Okay. So, with dehydration, dehydration, is there going to be a uh, volume deficit or volume overload? There's going to be a volume deficit, right? So, down. So, what's going to happen? How do we compensate? We're not, we're, you know, we don't have enough volume in the blood, right? In the blood vessels. So, your vasorestriction goes up to compensate. We're trying to bring it back to normal, back to balance, back to homeostasis. So, your vasoconstrictors, right? You're going to get really, really tight in your blood vessels if you're dehydrated. Your heart rate goes up. Your blood pressure is tanking, you know, um, 120 over 80. I don't even think I mentioned that, did I? Holy crud. Okay, 120 over 80 is our normal. When do you start getting concerned? Uh, as a nurse, you should get concerned if anything reaches about 80.